Well, thank you so much for everyone joining in today. Um, we have a very interesting guest here with us. Um, her name is, let me try to pronounce it correctly, Patarapiva. Patrava, sorry, let me try again. Pataravipa Bodira Bodira Nankura. I'll just try it once. And she is the designer of a fine jewelry for modern men and women. Uh, and she has been doing this for generations. I'm sure many of us here have a lot of questions to ask her. And I also know that some of you here today are also in uh, the lifestyle business. So let's make this session as lively and as creative uh, as we can. Feel free to chime in with your views. Feel free to chime in uh, with questions. Um, and let's try to make this really lively. So I think to start off, um, it will be good for everyone to introduce yourselves. Uh, I'll start first. And then if you would like to say something, please raise your hand. Please raise your hand so that we will get to you. Um, just to say hi to everybody and let everybody know who you are. And we can pass this around so we, we can do one round of hellos. And then after that, we will get Pat in uh, to speak to us. Now, just before we start saying hi, uh, a reminder, uh, if you would like to stay updated to the, is someone already in? Veronic? Veronic, Veronic please let me just Veronic. finish this sentence. If you would like to stay updated to the upcoming sessions at FEW, please uh, look at our web app for the latest update. Hello, Veronic, how are you? Hello, hi. <laughs> hi. Thank you for joining our, our session today. Would you like to introduce yourself? Um, yeah, why not? I am based in Hong Kong and I'm a consultant in fashion accessories and jewelry. And I'm currently working on my own uh, jewelry brand. So, yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us, Veronica. I hope you have an engaging and fun session today. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Please raise your hand. I see Meryl saying hi. I see Shatya saying hi as well. Hi, Dr. Farawahida Mohammed. Nice to see you as well. Do we have more people coming in to say hi? Okay, I guess people might take a while to, to warm up. Um, but anyway, it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, feel free to say hi in the chat box. You know, let's try to make this as engaging as possible. We also hope that you get the most out of this session. So please feel, to, feel free to ask uh, questions and share your viewpoints. You just have to click the, the raise hand button and we will get to you. Now, without further ado, shall we now put our hands together and welcome Pat on stage. Pat, please. Hi. Hi, Pat. Hello. So nice to have you here with us today. First of all, how are things in Bangkok? Very, very good. We've been um, keeping safe and distanced from this dangerous virus. <laughs> <laughs> been um been been okay actually because um i was in i was in london but i came back home for um christmas new years and to do some work that's good that's good now for for everyone here who may not have the time to read out more about pat um i'm just going to do a brief introduction of pat so uh pat um designs con contemporary fine jewelry uh, for modern men and women and her designs are known for an aesthetic audacity and a delicate handling of uh, materiality and texture. Pat is born in Thailand uh, into an illustrious clan of invent uh, inventors, developers, and philanthropists. Most notable is her maternal great-grandfather, Nai Lut, a beloved transportation and real estate visionary. Pat began making jewelry at the age of 13, 
drawing inspirations from her family heirlooms, lives, and legacy. Now, Pat, welcome back again. Hi. Maybe I was thinking, let me start with uh, a few questions. Sure. And after that, uh, I mean, everyone in the audience, if you have some viewpoints to share or questions to ask, feel free to chime in, yeah? So let's, uh, as I mentioned just now, Pat, you've started designing the jewelry at the age of 13. Right. I think that is really remarkable. Um, I mean, just for I myself, I, I have no idea what I was doing when I was 13 years old. I'm just curious, what made you start at such a young age? I think from, you know, very young age, I was always involved in um, art, in creative um, background mm -hmm. from my grandfather who was doing architect. So I always surrounded myself with um, painting, sketches, um, like floor plans. My mom's constantly um, working on like houses. So I was always like, you know, doing bits, helping her a little bit, you know, like going in and out from her office. So I always like surrounded myself with art and craft. And then one day I stumbled upon my mom's um, safe. And inside it was like with a lot of like stones. It's not real, it's just like fun stuff, like stones and um, cubic zirconia. So I started bringing in the stones and like prepare it with, with like some paper. So I was like, you know, drawing the, the stones and like I started to, um, you know, playing around with it. So I started sketching and the first piece I remember was like, I was into like cotton candy. So I, I, I started drawing this cotton candy surrounded with like the pink gemstones. Wow. So I, and then I told my mom, like, I wanted to make this in real life. You know, I want to wear it. So I started from that. And then like, you know, you know that in Bangkok, there's a lot of silversmiths, like goldsmiths. And then um, she went into making this impos uh, possible with mm -hmm. like, the silver. And yeah, it, it became my hobby. <laughs> and then I started from, you know, carrying the like, little bags to, to my mom's dinners with her friends. And then, um, you know, she, she um, all the friends started to have some interest. So I started selling a little bit with them. That is awesome. Like from making cotton candy to making your own glitter bags and then finally finding your first group of uh, clients to sell to. Yes. This is, this is such an inspiring story. Uh, in the meantime, it, yeah. I think it's, it's by like, you know, with friends, like, you know, friends of friends, words of mouth. You know, and and everyone's like, "Oh, you're just thirteen. Let's start like supporting her. You know, her little own business." Well, this is this is such an inspiring story. I mean, I I hope I I, I wished I I had maybe a little bit of your talent because I only remember myself in art class and my, my yeah. teacher getting really upset that I couldn't do very basic drawings. But anyway, uh, let's come back. Um, Saying hi to a, a few more of our audience. Uh, hello, Eli. Uh, thank you for joining us here. Going on to our next question, Pat. Um, yeah. You are a staunch believer of using old uh, techniques um, and instead of the new ones like uh, you know 3D printing, because now we see you know some of the jewelry stores actually go into 3D printing to print uh, uh, sophisticated shapes and, and yeah. um, textures. So. What make you a firm believer of using old techniques instead of the new ones? I think because like I love drawing. Mm -hmm. I'm very keen and I'm very, um, I love just love like with the pencil and pen. I love to touch things. I love to be able to like express my feeling with the paper and pen and pencil. So I, I think it gives you a little bit of more of a charm into like something touchable mm -hmm. and and i think it's like a more i think it's more emotional when you look at something um with a piece of paper 
it gives more like a three-dimensional rather than having it drawing in the computer it's a little bit cold and it might not give you the same feeling or same um shadows as like a drawing so i i always fond of um fond believer of of something from started from the scratch mm -hmm. and i think it's it's the value of time spent in in drawing in little details that you could actually um plan to do it with on a paper on a piece of paper right and i think for for um especially the designers like yourself mm -hmm. the ability to really use a pen and paper to sketch things out um the, the feeling you get at the end of it the, the sense of achievement you know the love for that yes design exactly. that you make yeah and you can like you know you can just like erase a little bit and then you can start like you know just like putting a little bit of shadow it gives you a little bit more emotional effect and value in there yes and i wonder whether this is the the view of uh, our, our audience here today you know whether you guys prefer 3D printing or using your own, uh, you know, taking your own pen and pencil to, to sketch and make the designs. I mean, what are your views? I saw, I remember I had a chat with Veronica. Right? Ver Veronica, would you like to come online and share your views with us? Is Veronica here? Okay, or uh, anyone, anyone here um, who would like to share your thoughts? Because I, I also understand that many of you guys here are in the lifestyle industry. Do you guys share any views about you know whether you prefer to draw using hand or you prefer to sketching sound on the software? Uh, whether you like three D printing or you like to make the the art and craft on your own? Any any thoughts from the audience? We have quite a good number of you guys. We have sixteen of you guys here. Hi, Kajal. Hello. Hi, Kajal. Hi, Kajal. Yeah, hi. Sorry, I, I'm just in the middle of something and I just tuned in, so I, I'm, I'm a bit funny right now. <laughs> Don't worry. Kajal, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, yeah, hi. I'm Kajal. I am also a jewelry designer. Hi. Um, yeah, I, I do fine jewelry, so... Great. Yeah, it's been about um, three plus years now since I switched from being a dentist to a fine jewelry designer. And I have my own uh, own brand that I'm working on. In Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, today I'm just working uh, at the back end and doing some things. So, and I, I got to know that you have this wonderful event going on. So I just thought, let me pop in and, and um, get into, yeah, to hear all this so um so so um uh, for me getting getting right into the question right so for me yes. um i i think it depends these days i do mostly is uh i like designing by using cad okay mm -hmm. um but uh, but since the work gets more and more so now i don't have so much time to just sit and do a lot of things so mm -hmm. most of the times what I do now is um, either for my collections or for bespoke because I do my own collections as well as I work on client orders like bespoke pieces, custom made designs and uh, as well. Um, so I prefer is do a rough um, uh, drawing or getting my ideas on paper first. Yeah. So I just like to sit down and get my ideas on paper and then uh, you know, once I like it or or if any idea comes and then I look at the paper and then I like to work on the CAD to find yeah. the details and all the little things that goes because, in. Because you print um, your wax mold on CAD, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So if I'm doing, um, so depending on the work, of course, but most of it, yes. Uh, so I am doing, uh, I am printing um, the, the wax mold. So I do a CAD um so it always starts with the idea first on the paper for me yeah i, I still enjoy doing that 
Yeah, I yeah the same as me. I mean, I I only use everything by hand, and I I, I draw, and then I give it to my goldsmiths directly. Okay. I, I don't I don't use CAD at all. Unfortunately, okay. Okay. I feel like it's it's a little bit like. It's a it's a bit stiff and a bit cold when it's printed, and uh -huh. so like, and so when you when you cast it to to um, gold, mm -hmm. it gives a feeling of um, non movement, and it, uh, it doesn't move. Uh, as much uh, as me, I, I beg to differ because it also depends on what you're making, right? So when I am doing. Um, uh, some things are better off when they, for me, some of the designs are better off when I, uh, when I design it on CAD and print it and do it because, uh, you know, it also depends on what the customer is asking or what kind of collection I'm building and yeah. also like the size or sometimes mm -hmm. um, like for micro settings and stuff, for smaller mm -hmm. like regular collections, it's yeah. easier, mm -hmm. it gets faster and also it's easier for me to, uh, when I'm designing on the CAD, the idea is always first on paper, but when I'm doing it on CAD, then, uh, then I get to um do some details which would not be possible when i do it with my uh you know directly from my design to without the printing yeah uh, so depending on what i am doing uh yeah, it's probably faster printing. for sure but yeah but still i'm i i'm like quite old school in 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 my technique so mm -hmm. i still believe in uh, making the 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 jewelry by hand and you know the wax by hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have the, the the workshop just behind me, actually. Today. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much, Kojo, for sharing your your thoughts. Uh, I I think for it's it's really interesting to hear how different jewelry makers have different approach uh, to to making the jewelry. Thank you so much, Kajal. Please please jump back where, as we move on with the questions. And I see Julie here. Hi, Julie. Julie, are you there? Okay, as we wait for Julie, maybe Pat, shall we move on to the next question? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, to get the conversation going. Now, uh, we were talking about making the process, right? Uh, uh, sorry, going to uh, re or, uh, relying more on the old processes. So what are some of the costs and opportunities you see in, in maintaining these old processes? I think the the opportunity to maintain is is very important because um, you know jewelry making has been um, done before century and it was the Egyptian it was the Greek and then everything is is studied through those methods and those um, people so i think it's very important to keep that um that knowledge and those mm -hmm. that that old techniques even in thailand we have like the old setting the gold work there's so many like uh, methods to do jewelry mm -hmm. i think it's very valuable the of those assets to keep on um uh, getting inspired from even i, I love to look at um, old Thai gold jewelry to you know to get inspired from to to even uh, uh, collect these kind of um, techniques it's very rare nowadays even enameling you know the old technique of doing enamel by by um, the hot methods it's it's mm. very important i think but it mm. could have a cost like it could be higher because um, everything is made by hand so so that's that could add up your cost in mm. the, um yeah i think so right so uh, bearing in mind these cost concerns and also appreciating the beauty of these old processes for yeah. um for young people out there uh, who would like to say start a jewelry business uh, mm -hmm. making their own jewelries. Do you have uh, any advice or pieces of advice that you would like to share with them? Yeah, I think there's no mistakes in 
in starting your own business because I think you learn by making mistakes and you learn by doing. So I think if you wanted to start young or if you don't have any connections or you don't have, you don't know where to start, I think it's, it's, you just have a, have a piece of paper and, you know, try to like start what you want to do. And then, and then, you know, there's an internet these days that you can just Google like where to do things and how to make things, how to learn without going to school. I think you can start from, from nothing basically and just, and just learn by doing. I, these days I still, I still learn more with like drawings or even like knowing how to uh, making jewelry by like learn with the goldsmiths in house. I absolutely resonate with you on this point. Uh, sometimes we learn the best by just doing and trying. So getting the first step out there. And uh, a lot of times uh, the valuable lessons uh, do not come from classrooms. It, it really comes from learning on the job. As you right. Yeah, and, and if there's no mistakes, then that's also, um, you know, you have to look at the mistakes that you, um, that you do or if you like, um, I think there's some flaws in every every aspects and every step that you take. Right. So I think, yeah, I think you learn from that as well. I wonder whether our uh, audience here, whether you guys have any valuable lessons uh, you have learned uh, in your in your journey as you go through your lifestyle businesses. If you do have, please raise your hand, share those with us. We would love to hear your story. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, Julie is finally back online. We couldn't hear you just now. Please come in and say hi, Julie. Hello. Hi. Hi, Julie. hi everyone. Hello. Hello. Can you see me? <laughs> Oh, we can't see you. Not yet. Uh, that's Not fine. Yet. <laughs> um, hello. Hi, we, we can see you now. Ah, hi, nice meeting you. Nice to virtually meet. This is Julie. I've been working for female entrepreneur uh, worldwide as a business development for the uh, directing the business development for, for four years. And I've been actually looking at your website and your profiles, you know, just to understand about your business and how, how you work with this luxury markets. And yeah. uh, having a look at the website, uh, you have absolutely gorgeous products. <laughs> and yes. I love them most it's of them. It's made with love, love and oh, care. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. And then you, you define like most of your product that you define by uh, the love of a surprising contrast. Uh, I found it that was very well described. And um, yeah, the, in luxury market, what I understand is that it's, it's the challenge is to dif differentiate the products from, from others. Yeah? And then also the, the way to develop their, your stories, right? That stands mm -hmm. out. And I was wondering, I mean, when you first start designing your product, have you come up with these ideas and then it developed as now it is? Or have you been gradually being innovative, bring your ideas, and you, you have got to this stage just now from all the challenges you have gone through? So basically I, most, yeah. I think I think I, I, I keep looking at the same thing, same mm -hmm. inspiration. Mm -hmm. For example, I started with the, how I use this material, the coconut mm -hmm. shell, mm -hmm. but but it's also the, the 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 point where or the location where my grandparents met each other so mm -hmm. i started using this material that could only be found in this provence mm -hmm. and and so i started using this knowing that it's also recyclable mm -hmm. recycle material it's also natural material it's also also very difficult to find mm -hmm. and and very rare to grow this these uh, coconut shells. Mm. So yes. I started doing that, and, and you know, going back to to see how they farm and how mm -hmm. they grow the coconut. And so, and I I love looking at um, the the silhouettes of 
of the of the coconut and mm -hmm. it, it, the shape is very very interesting it looks like a woman curves mm -hmm. so i i also in, got inspired by that mm -hmm. and with, with those little inspiration could make up with so many like silhouettes on your in in jewelry line mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that's that's all that's usually i i have very i narrow it down the inspiration mm -hmm. and look at only few things and then and, and looking at it like all all over again and again mm -hmm. and it yeah. becomes and I, i start sketching a lot you know like for days for like many days until i finally like get the exact um exact um, silhouette that i want to develop into wax and then cast into gold i see yeah and you also must have the artistic backgrounds obviously and then yeah i mean yeah, we yeah, all, i always practice drawing you know mm -hmm. like you go to art class and you draw the nudes from the nude females models mm -hmm. <laughs> i started doing that or even like you start like taking some objects in front of you and you start like sketching the, mm -hmm. the objects in front of you yeah great thank you for sharing your entrepreneurial journey um yeah <laughs> thank you for inviting me for the question thank you julie Thank you. Um, Pat, if you're okay, I was thinking of, uh, you know, having a mini Q&A session, uh, maybe slightly later, because I noticed that some of our audience here do have questions for you, but uh, unfortunately they are using mobile, so they can only type the question. So let me, let me, let's go on. Thank you, Julie, once again. Let me move on to the next question. I find this question really interesting. So um, I, I heard that, for example, uh, some of the materials you use, you mentioned coconut shells and all those, right? It actually takes years to, to source. Yes. So I'm curious, why such a long period to source? And are there certain qualities you look out for in, in choosing your materials? I think, personally, I love working with natural materials mm -hmm. and especially something that can be recycled because that's better for our um, global warming and environment. Right. So I, I started using the, this type of coconut shell that could only be grown in this um, province in Thailand. So it, it took years to grow it, like 10 years. Mm. And, but, but, but the shell is very thick as if, it, as if you're working with wood. So it's very strong, it's, it's not fragile at all. So by using and mixing it with gold, it, it, you know, value it up and, you know, become like a very beautiful skin and textures. So I, I think that's, I mean, I love choosing that material and it's, it, it is also where uh, my grandparents met each other. So I, I, very I nice. really love working uh, with the co that coconut shell. So in, in my personal collection right now, we have the objects from this, this material. And then we have um, the jewelry line of this material. Wow, but I can imagine, because co coconut shells are very hard, as you mentioned, right? It's almost like wood. So to, to extract- Especially this breed, especially this breed. Right, to extract that material and to make it so fine, like jewelry. I'm just curious, how long does that process take for you? I think with within like few months, we, we, we can use this material from, you know, taking it down from the tree mm. and we, you know, like um, sanding the, the, the shell and the, the surface into the smooth or if I want to use it rough, then I, I use it rough and then I cast it into gold. It depends on like which design that I want to go into. I see. Okay, good. Now, Maybe let's now move on to our mini Q&A session. So audience, please feel free to, I mean, if you guys are using mobile uh, for think, any reason. I think Jacqueline yes. is asking what is the first step to enter luxury market. Right. Well, I think first of all, you need to know who, who are your neighbors? Like who are you competing? Or like who are you, who do you want to, to be next to? For example, 
I wasn't looking at Cartier, I wasn't looking at uh, Bugari or Van Cleef, but of course I, I know their history because like, you know, they started from hundreds of years. They have history, but for me, I don't have history of um, like of a jewelry family background. So I started looking at like young jewelry designer as 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 living in London, I have a lot of um, competitors and and a lot of um, people in the same mindset. So I started researching from even even from like shops, from from fashion store, from concept stores. Like who are these um, young new designers that has that that is focusing on on um, design plus um fine materials so i so so that's how i start like by by wanting to be at a certain stores for example um like dover street market london was like uh you know they they really focus on like the design and um they're 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 the experts of finding the the crazy and mad design to showcase the originality of each designers. So that's the start. So I, I know like exactly who I want to be next. And that's how you, you know, value that mark, that same market. Thank you so much for, for sharing that advice. I think uh, absolutely we have to understand what we call the market positioning. Before yeah. we, we, we start uh, uh, entering so which tier exactly in the luxury market are we yeah and I, and I was looking at like not looking but i was thinking from for my own like you know like i didn't want to like produce 100 pieces of each design i want to keep it keep it um, niche and keep it like minimal but of course like maybe like i can re re uh, reproduce some design that's why i have like a mini uh, workshop so I, I know that I wanted to start my own workshop to be able to you know produce and also that I can also work closely with the goldsmiths because my design is very uh, intricate and, and detailed so I wanted to work closely with them thank you Pat we have uh, Shatia Ruby uh, she, she has a question for you so I'm gonna hide myself and have uh, Shatia Rubini uh, and ask a question Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Okay, it's good. Yes. <laughs> okay, hi, I'm Shatya. I'm calling from uh, Malaysia. And uh, I, run, um, I run a business uh, where I design handmade clutches, clutch bags. Clutch. Yeah. So uh, my question to you is, um, because we are trying to tap into the luxury market, and um, I feel that I'm struggling in the part of to consider uh, what are the factors to consider to set price for luxury market? And um, is there any advice or things that you did before which you can let us know? Yeah, sure. I mean, well, if you're if you're doing um, accessories and you're yeah. doing uh, clutches, first mm -hmm. of all, I think you should have to look at your materials. Like, what are you mm -hmm. what are you working on? Is it like brass? Is is it uh, uh, leather is it real leather is it exotic skins mm -hmm. you know, it depends on how many how many how many pieces you're you're producing okay and i think it's it's also the um, the design the cost in behind you know the 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 of the of the process okay, okay. and i think i think if you're you know if you if you if you're gonna be opening a shop in kl or are you selling online only or online and, and if it's online are you selling from directly your store your website or if it's um through um like social media platforms yeah. it, it all depends i mean if you want to go super luxury you want to own your your flagship store so that you mm -hmm. can that, so that people can see your universe, you know, like what are what are you inspiring from, you know? Okay, okay, thank you. 
Yeah, I think it, I hope it helps. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just started like two years ago and we just launched our website last year. So we, I'm slowly trying to get into the market and um, doing a lot of research on it. So just wanted to uh, I think advise also, from you. Also, if you don't want to open a shop or flagship yeah. store, you can mm-hmm. start by doing a pop-up. Like, for example, you can, you can start um, like hiring a, a, a suite in a hotel and do like a, a weekend pop-up sales, you know. Okay. Okay, thanks. That's a great idea. Thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> no problem. Thank you, Shatia. Now, on the, I think Shatia mentioned a very good point, which is about uh, marketing. And uh, uh, Pat, also want to just get your uh, thoughts on, you know, especially online marketing. Um, it seems that uh, to attract the, the, the group uh, into luxury market, are there certain online platforms that you would recommend uh, you know, our other business owners to try out that has good, uh, I guess, target audience that will look at the, the luxury market segment? And would you recommend putting in like sizable amount into running marketing campaigns? I mean, of course, uh, marketing is very uh, important. But I think it grows naturally and it could grow organically because if you are like a, an entrepreneur and you started your own, you're not, you can't compete with the big fish out there, right? Mm. So I think it's it's mainly it's the it's the it's the products that what you're selling, and then it could go 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 to um, where are you selling and how you're selling them, and you know, who are representing the brands? Like, are you doing the campaign? Are you doing like, are you putting your, your, your costs in making um, lookbooks and campaigns and branding? Um, it all pretty much depends on um, your, your, um, the quality that you're putting in into each segment. Mm. Um, but, 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 you know, like, you know the online uh, stores that are famous in the world. You know, it, it, there's a net porte there's Matches Fashion, um, there's Farfetch, there's My Teresa. Like, there's so many um, online shops. Yeah, out there that you could, uh, you know, take a look. There's a, um, what's it called? The one, um, yeah. That I mean, there's a lot, right? Right, right. So I just, I just thought of one, Sex at Fifth Avenue, but I'm not sure whether they, they. Yeah, Sex, they do, Sex yeah. Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus, Bergdorf Goodman. Yeah. So, um, I, I guess the for for this, uh, I guess strategy that you are proposing, uh, is a tie up with existing. Uh, online stores that can help to carry the brand and you know from there try to get uh, sort of uh, awareness build awareness uh, of the product and draw um, the audience to uh, uh, the the business owners online store I guess that that is the approach that you are suggesting here I'm just curious as to you know for example would you recommend for example uh, setting up a Facebook account uh, and I think, Instagram, well, yeah. I mean, especially now that we have that access, the free free access, you know. So right. it's it's always good to to um, promote yourself in 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 those channels, you know. So mm. we, you know, there's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You know, it's all linked and it all works. Okay, good. Um, I see that uh, we have. Uh, Okay, since our audience are very satisfied with uh, having learned so much from Pat. Now, Pat, uh, before we, we end the session, uh, w- one last question for you. Um, and that is um, for, for this year, uh, because of uh, COVID and uh, how, how it has so impacted so many families. And I, I think for, for individuals, uh, uh, the first thing they might say, delay is is buying something from the luxury market uh what would be uh, 
what would be your advice for the luxury uh, market business owners or lifestyle uh, business owners here with us today um, to find opportunities amid COVID? I think, I think especially now that we're all linked into uh, internet, mm -hmm. we should, we, I think we should start by exploring and um, investing in um, online sales. So, so if you have got a, a good photographer, a good video, video, um, videographer, photographer, you know, filmmaker, you should start like, you know, uh, producing like a great content from that, from your, for your products and promote it to your online sites mm. and through social media. So, you know, like everyone's at home and everyone's connected. So mm. it, it's very easy for like a, a woman sit at home drinking their own wine and bored at home she would just click online and do like Instagram shopping, for example, you know. I think I'm one of those because yeah. I do look on Instagram and look at all the beautiful jewelry. I think it's worth it in investing in um, online channels. Good. And online sales, yes. Thank you so much, Pat. It's such uh, lovely pleasure to have you with us here today. Yeah, thank um, you so much. Let's do a round of applause for Pat. I'm going to represent our audience here. Now, if you would like to stay updated to upcoming events, please do not forget to check uh, FEW's web app. And we will see you in the next session. Thank you so much, Pat. Everybody Thank have a so pleasant much. evening or rest of the day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye.